Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, this is a, a, a bit late in the day for me uh, to try to come on and do a live. It's actually 3.45 uh, p.m., uh, which is, I'm just looking at it right now, 5, 4, 3, countdown. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're going to add on, I just really feel strongly about having to come on and add these just some amazing things, or at least I think they're amazing, uh, points that I have been seeing come together. It's, it's almost like some level of synchronicity, if you will, as far as rapture signs uh, for the Bride of Christ that is is likely right around the corner. Uh, and I just want to be able to add from this. Now, if if you haven't seen, and, and please, everyone, uh, come on in as you get the opportunity. Uh, I'm going to try to be able to do a message today. I have so much. This short message that I'm going to do is just because the time is so late and I want to be able to add some things to what has already been covered and it seems like so much, but um, it, in uh, day after tomorrow, I've, I've been given so much to be able to, uh, to tell you brothers and sisters, because I'm wanting everyone to be so excited to, to, to be so expectant to be so encouraged that our glorious and bridegroom King Jesus is about to call his bride up. And I, I, I'm just, can I use the term giddy with excitement? I am just so prompted in my spirit. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I have had two more God dreams. I'm not going to actually go into them, but I'm telling you it's deep, detailed, and it's pointing to this. I, I can tell you, I'll tell you this. Uh, one of the dreams, it, it actually it actually wasn't a dream. I don't know what else to call it. You, I, I, you can't call it a vision either. I was actually in the middle of a God dream. And Abba, how do I say, like parted almost like curtains and they, they were uh, semi-transparent, but they were like trying to look through water a little bit, like water running down a glass. You know, you, you, you know what that looks like. And if you've seen that, you can tell the things that are happening on the other side, but you just don't have a clarity that you can view it with. And what I was being shown was the window. No, the portal that is about to open up. And I was seeing directly into the garden of heaven. And it was even though I, it looks like I'm looking through water, I, it was stunning, stunningly beautiful. Anyway, there, there was so much and it was connected with what I was seeing and I was seeing these leaves. It, I, I just really can't describe it, but if you have not had an opportunity or if you're not familiar with uh, uh, our dear sister, Pearl Colary, she, she came out with a message, what was it, yesterday, I believe, uh, um, maybe it was two days ago, I, I, I can't recall, it, 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 I, I'm thinking it was just yesterday, because I was just thinking about this vision that I, not vision, this view that I was having of this heavenly garden. And 
I'll try to leave out a lot of this because it can go into so many different rabbit trails and I don't want to uh, j just kind of do that. I'm, I'm just trying to make a point how every one of us are coming together and each one with their own puzzle piece and they're all forming together into this one cohesive picture. And that is the coming of our Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. So Sister Clary, she, she came out with this video and it was my confirmation because in this video, which is actually stunning because she was talking about the numbers 117 and 717, which I have been seeing and many people have been seeing all over the place. And, and I'm, I'm going to use that as a tickler because I really want you to go. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to her, please do so. Just awesome, awesome stuff there as many people are getting together. But as I was watching her video, she showed this picture of the these fig trees that were putting on leaves and my eyes i know they got as big as dinner plates but this was a an earthly physical representation of what i had seen in the heavenlies and i was just like oh, oh. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's what I had seen. So anyway, there, there's so much more to that. I'm just going to use that as a little tickler. Please go and subscribe to her uh, because it was related to some other things, this God dream that was shown to, my, uh, to me and, uh, and how close we were to uh, the rapture and other things. And that will give you a clue. But let me go ahead and switch then for a moment so I can just go in and discuss about what I want to discuss today. All right. I have been having so many, so many, I, I mean, like nonstop. And it just happened just again. Oh my goodness. Okay. 153, 153, 153. Rapture finish. Okay. I'm just, okay. I'm looking at, I was just looking at it right now. It's just switched. Uh, but I have been seeing 153. Rapture fish, that's what it means to me. The 153 great catch of the big fish out of uh, John chapter 21. And, and I have been now seeing this so often that it is just like a tidal wave of rapture fish, okay? Just to give you, a, I'm just going to give you what has happened just in, in the last little bit of time. Right before I signed on, excuse me, just a little bit before I had decided to get on and do this live stream, there's a couple of things. So 153, the rapture fish. And the 458, which you know that Jesus sung to me in this earlier uh, God dream, which was a confirmation that it was from him. 458, what is that? Well, in Strong's, the number 458 stands for Enimelech. And his name means God is king. And that's how I knew that when a dream I was having, a God dream that I had multiple times, 
with Jesus singing to me, I'm on my way, and I ask for confirmation, I have the dream again with the same song that he's singing to me, and rather than saying, I'm on my way, he starts singing, I'm four, five, eight. And that's where this comes from, brothers and sisters. He's four, five, eight. He is God. He is king. And that is what that was about. That was confirmation for me, right? And if you haven't seen that, oh my goodness, it was so powerful. I encourage you to go and check these out. However, the 153 and the 458, I have been seeing everywhere, not just on clocks, but on signs, on, on uh, anywhere that you can find numbers, I am prompted to be able to see this. I won't uh, just bore you with all of the many instances. I'm just going to show you right now, this is what I did right before I decided I've got to go online. I've got to talk about this. So I was in my going on in my room and I have the picture of the clock. One, five, three, 153 fish. Okay. <laughs> and I was going like, you know, I'm just knowing it. And I just told you, so this 153 that I just told you uh, just a couple of minutes ago, that was 351. So read backwards, 153, 153 fish. And then just a few minutes after this, I take, I'm looking at it. I'm like, no, no way. It's just, it's too much. All right. What you have to understand is that this past weekend, it changed daylight savings time for us here in Australia, okay? And so I'm having to try to, uh, 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 to change clocks and to update, and some of my clocks are on 24-hour military time, and some of my clocks are on regular 12-hour time, and then we had a power outage, and that reset some of the clocks. And, and so I'm still trying to get them all set, right? So it's a big deal. So I still have a couple now that are still out of sync. And I'm going like, okay, okay. So I just left it that way. But what it's done is it brought me to then as I walked by, then again, right before I decide to go online, and I walk by my clock that's on my oven. And what do I see? I'm four, five, eight. I'm four, five, eight. He's number one. He's four, five, eight. God is king. Now, at so if you haven't, I want you to understand just how very powerful this is. If you have not seen my last two messages, the time is so short, but if you want to be blessed and if you want to understand just how close we are, then I, then just listen to it. Now, do they're long videos. I understand that, but turn up the speed. Watch it for a few minutes at a time. You, 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 I am not expecting that everyone has the opportunity to sit down in one uh, sitting and be able to watch a one and a half or a two hour video or even a one hour video or a half hour video for that matter. But at the same time, you will find that uh, uh, that it's going to be it's going to be so encouraging and uplifting to you. I'm telling you that that's going to be the case. Now, let me add another thing. I ended up getting a call this morning, okay, from my brother who is in Texas, my younger brother. And he called me and there was an emergency. So 
I want you to listen to these and listen to these little flags. I received a wake up call because it was a quarter to midnight my time. I had actually been asleep. So I receive a phone call. I hadn't turned my phone off by my bed. It turns out to be my brother. Now I'm not going to go in. It's, it, was, it was not good news. Uh, but the important thing was my brother says, oh, you're in bed? And I said, well, yes, it's, it's, it's a quarter to midnight. And usually, usually I would not use the term midnight. I would say it's a quarter to 12, right? But because he's in Texas, he wouldn't have understood what that meant from that standpoint. So uh, I said, it's a quarter to midnight. And he said, oh, I didn't realize. So he gave me some quick information. And then, of course, uh, he hung up. But so then I think, you know, wow, since he woke me up, I'll go ahead and take a quick restroom break and then get back to bed. Okay. So I run in and, you know, of course, eyes are all, you know, can't see because I'm like, wow, wow. Well, okay. So tired. Use the restroom and I'm coming out after having finished that. And then my eyes look right at the clock. And because I'm trying to, what time is it? And my clock reads 21 53, 153 fish. And I just stopped right there in the middle of my, in my room. And I'm saying, Abba, Abba, no, Abba. I'm just, I'm just stunned. Guy got weak in the knees. It was such a powerful moment. The midnight call to awaken, and it was for 153 fish. Praise God. He is coming for his bride. I want to tell you that. I want to tell you that. My goodness, he's coming. Now, is this just me? No, not at all. Not at all. I have been receiving numerous emails from brothers and sisters that are seeing the same thing, posting, wow, I just noticed, 153, 153, rapture fish, and this is just from others and others. All right, as you can see, I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited because we are that close. Now, what I want to go ahead and uh, discuss with you are even more. Now, the reason why I had decided, yes, uh, Yvette uh, says 11-11 again today. And yes, 11-11, It's just, and, and more, more, 210, 210. That, I, I think that that relates to me because of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 10. Ah, uh, if you don't know it, go read it. And he drew me up. Oh, yes. A rapture verse. A rapture verse. So here's what I'm saying. Many people, they're seeing different numbers. And, and, and let me say this. The reason why I'm focusing on numbers just at the moment is because there's just so many of them. And God is a numbers person. I mean, after all, he did put us the book of numbers in the Bible, right? He's all about numbers. He's all about timing. He's all about perfect pinpoint timing. And that's, that's, that's what I think we're seeing more and more of. Again, if you have not seen my last two messages, I so encourage you to do so. Uh, even maybe just the very last one right now, 
because there was so much additional information that I added on top of the earlier one. Okay. Now, the reason why I have uh, decided to go on and discuss this more so that because we're in, we're there. I, I really believe, and I know, look, I've said that before. I know that other watchmen and women, they've said that before. But I let me stop and address that too before I go into this. And it's not because I'm trying to go all over the map, but I think it's important. There are a number of people. Uh, there are some that mock and scoff. There are some that are brought up in different um, denominations. There are some that are brought up with different traditions and that sort of thing. It's so I understand. And am I saying that there is one thing that has every answer altogether? And the answer is no. No, and, and I think that that is also from God's amazing design. That is why he does it. He gives one person a piece of the puzzle here, another person a piece of the puzzle there, and so on. And God's not up there saying, oh, well, that person's in a Catholic church, therefore, no, I'm not going to give him any revelation or her any revelation. That person over there is uh, not even a believer. And so I'm definitely not going to show that person anything. Are you following what I'm saying here? He said, the scripture says that in the last days, he's going to pour out of his spirit on all flesh. And he didn't say, I'm going to pour out my spirit on Catholic flesh. He didn't say, I'm going to pour out my spirit on Muslim flesh. He didn't say, are you following what I'm saying? He said, I'm going to pour out of my spirit on all flesh. And there's, and so how do we know that that's happening? All of it points to Jesus, no matter what particular uh, religious upbringing or ideas that you have, we have had so many people from, uh, from different faiths that have had rapture dreams or visitations by Jesus and those types of things that have actually caused them to have faith in Jesus. Amen. He is taking this opportunity. And I think the point is because we are so close. OK, and so I think that it's important not to close your mind to any of this. There is a lot that has been opened up in these last moments. Uh, God, he, what he does is a progressive revelation. And, and, and all it takes is just to go back through the entire Bible. Like, I mean, it's it's progressive revelation. Uh, the New Testament, if you just want to look at it, we see everything in the Old Testament because, wow, revelation in the New Testament. That's And we have a book called Revelation, right? The Revelation. And, and it's all about Jesus. Did we see Jesus in the Old Testament? Well, during that time, that period, no. But when we see the revelation of Jesus in the New Testament, then we can look back and we can see, wow, just like he said, everything was written about me. And it was, okay? So what I'm saying also at the same time, all of these Old Testament prophets, everything is happening and, and, and different prophecies that are being written down and hundreds or maybe thousands of years go by, and uh, and but we know that they are going to be fulfilled, right? All right. But if you're holding on to a particular idea, oh no, there's no more fulfilling prophecy today. You're missing out, and it's also not scriptural. 
uh, if you're holding on to one particular piece and you're not taking into account, I'm sorry, it, it's very bright here, folks. So if that light is, is shining, it looks like I got a bit of a halo over my head, doesn't it? Um, I just want you to understand that you have to be open to receive the revelation. You can't do this. And so the point I'm making here is that when I talk about there being three harvests, for an example, now am I, am I the only one that now sees that? No, that it's growing, it's expanding. Why? Because more and more people are looking into the scriptures and they are seeing, wait a minute, that's true. The only reason that you get stovepiped, as it were, into one particular area is because you're not willing to read all of the scriptures and to see them as all being true. It, it, it says the, in the volume of the book was written of me. That's Jesus talking. Everything there was written of him. And he is the word of God. And the Bible, that Bible is true. Every word is true. And you don't get to say, yeah, well, that part is not for me, right? Or I can't learn anything from that part. That would be a huge mistake, right? That would be a huge mistake. Because every, what, it says all scripture is profitable, right? Right? In Timothy, it says all scripture. It doesn't say just the part that you want to, you know, hold on to or you want to agree with. So out of all of that, what we put together is that there are three harvests, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation. And why do I do that? It makes things easy, right? And all of the scriptures, that is why if you're reading some scriptures and you're honest about what you're reading and you say to yourself, well, I believe in post-tribulation. Now, that's not me. I'm pre-tribulation all the way, folks. Uh, but let's say that there was a person who believed in the post-tribulation rapture of the church, right? All right. Now, that person who believes them, if you are open to the prompting of Holy Spirit, you then have to look at these other scriptures and not say, nope, 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 that's wrong. When you look at it and you say, well, these look pre-tribulational to me, or it looks like these right here, they look like they happen in the middle of the tribulation period. And the reason is, if you stop to ask yourself, why would that be? and you ask Holy Spirit for wisdom, then what you are going to find, it's because they're all true, right? And, and if they're all true, just accept them as all true. You're going to learn so much more about what Jesus is trying to say to you. You're learning more about Jesus. You're learning more about how he thinks, how he feels, what he desires. Do you see? That is so amazing. So amazing. All right. And in this day, at this time, so much is taking place to tell us that he is any moment about to open up the sky and take up pre-tribulation, his bride, okay? And, uh, and, and, and I think that's, think about this too, because here's the downside. Here's the downside. If you have decided that, no, I'm not going to look at this stuff, you've done two things. You're, you don't have a teachable spirit, right? What the word tells us, now, now follow me, I'm not trying to be just, uh, you know, pointing fingers. I'm not saying that. Just, just consider this. The enemy does not want you to read your Bible. 
the enemy does not want you to learn more about Jesus because he pops off of all of the pages of that book, right? It is one big love letter from our God to us, okay? All right. So he doesn't want you to do that. And if he can keep you from finding out more, then guess what he can do? He has a better chance of deceiving you about things that are included in those scriptures that you are not willing to look into. You see? Think about it for a minute. That is why we are given a blessing, the only blessing that's promised in the Bible for reading a book of the Bible is the book of Revelation. Why? All in things. There's a blessing to that because when you read it, right, you, you learn more. It's so, uh, yes, hello. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, Bride of Christ, soon to be gone. Love that name. And I agree that that is about to happen. Um, so that's what we want to do. And I'm encouraging you to be open to this. Be open to where you hear people prophesying. Be open to uh, people that are having dreams, that are having visions. Now, having said that, you also have to look in the word and make sure that it lines up with the word of God. But if you're not reading that part, if you're saying no, no, no to that part, you're not going to be able to do that, okay? And I love you. I love you. I want the best for you, the very best. And you will be so filled, overjoyed beyond belief. Once the, the when your eyeballs, when Holy Spirit goes, turns that, flips that switch, and you just look at that and you think, amazing, oh, 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 and guess what? From that moment you receive that revelation, it's yours. It's yours completely. All right. So I encourage you to do that. There are three harvests, pre, mid, and post. And if you look at it, that does not mean, so obviously that's what I'm saying. Not everyone fits into the same group. The Apostle Paul talks about it being an order, a military order. That's the Greek word tagma. And that means ordered like companies or groups, right? So there are multiple groups that are included in the harvest model. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So where there'll be people harvested pre-trip, yes, that's one group. Then there'll be people harvested mid-trib. Yes, that's another group. And there will even be some harvested at the end uh, in post-tribulation, right? So, and there's so much to deal with there, but I want to focus, as I always do, on the bride of Christ, the barley harvest that happens in the early part of the year, when we say spring, but I've pointed out and I've done messages on it. If you have any questions, then, oh, thank you, Baba. Oh, it is so hot here. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Just yesterday, it was so cold, I had to put two blankets on the bed. It's, it's in that transition stage for us, but so, but right now, it's just like, Okay, so anyway, all right, uh, we want to be able to do this. We want to be able to look at this, and we want to understand that there is there are only two seasons in Israel. And since we look at Israel, Israel is the timepiece, right? Israel is the centerpiece from where we look at everything and where we get our ideas from, okay? And so this is the case. When you look at Israel, 
and you look at it and you consider there is only winter and summer. And I think once again, that is by design. It's by design, okay? And so when we say, oh, well, the, the rapture can happen in the spring. Well, it may be spring to you, but remember, it's actually still winter from, well, uh, okay, let me kind of correct that. There's, we deal with the spring equilux, that's the day of equal parts, uh, or uh, yes, the daytime equal parts, that's equa, equal, lux, light, that's the day of equal light, in equal light and darkness. And then you have the equinox, that equa, equal, nox, night. That's equal night, okay? So anyway, the what we see when we look at that, we see for most of the world, that's when we talk about going into spring. But Israel doesn't call it spring. You, you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to get to you. All right, so if you look at my last last video, then so many things talking about the snow, so many things because snow, wintertime, and, and my uh, uh, God uh, premonition of 1996 where it snowed, I was given the idea in January that it was going to snow in April of that year. And people thought I was crazy. Well, actually, there's quite a few people that watch me now, and they think I'm crazy anyway. But um, but I had received a premonition from God. And why why was that so, such a such a big thing, right? I just didn't understand. But I knew that's what it was, and He wanted me to tell people about it. So I was telling all of my friends and family about it, and even my wife at the time. She said, honey, it, it never snows here. We lived in Dallas in April. And she was right, right? Up to that time, we just, does it snow in winter? Sometimes it does, sometimes really badly. But after March and then into April, no, we, we didn't get any snow. But I'm saying, I'm thinking, God showed me. He showed me in the first week in April, it's going to snow here. And uh, and so, you know, maybe I was like, oh, okay, Wayne, okay. You know, that, that kind of placating thing. Yeah, that's, that's nice. And so what we find, and if there's so much more information in the last video, I keep harping on that uh, only because... There's so much information I think is going to help you uh, when you see that. All right. Uh, so in this instance, uh, then, of course, first week in April, April 5th, 1996, I'm standing at the front window. My wife comes up behind me asking me, what are you looking at? And I just point out the window and she looks over at me, it's snowing. And I said, mm -hmm. just like God said. And of course, then all the people I had told uh, at the time, you know, I mean, you couldn't deny it. And, and in fact, it, it set a record in the record books for uh, snow in, in certain parts there and that sort of thing. Anyway, it's, uh, uh, Sylvia says, it's unusual, but we also got snow today. Yeah, there we go. There we go. It's, it, it's, and now, of course, from 1996, what we can say, uh, uh, April the 9th in English Gematria equals 726. Will says that. And 726, what is that? Hot pod, so rapture.
rapture fish, 153, rapture fish. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Now, the importance I never knew for many years after that. And it wasn't until recently that I think that Holy Spirit revealed to me what that meant and tied it to my second afterlife experience. I've had two, one in 1989 and another in 1996, amazingly seven years apart. He never wanted me, Abba never wanted me to, to speak about the second one. Yeah, I, and so I haven't. I mean, I have to like a handful of people, but never publicly did that. And so what was interesting about that is that uh, I was always giving my testimony from the first one, which was so overwhelmingly, amazingly powerful. And, and, and it was because it included me being placed at the cross. I saw the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross and so many other parts of this. And it was about the wedding. Guess what? I never knew. I, 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 I didn't figure out for the longest time that what I experienced was the consummation of the wedding. That's what that whole thing is about. That it's, it's just amazing how that was. And so here we've got the picture of Jesus on the cross where he is giving birth to his bride, right? He's pierced in his side, water and blood come out, just like Adam is pierced in his side and a rib is taken out. And from that is formed his bride. And so for, out of Jesus' side is formed his bride. And that's then what I experienced, that, that wedding, that union, that consummation of that union. Amazing, amazing. But here now, that's what we're looking at. Here is then this second one. And I wasn't released to do this publicly. And I, I say it wasn't released. I wasn't told to tell until just a few days ago when I gave it in that second, uh, two messages ago, right, where I was discussing it. And it wasn't until after, at that point where Holy Spirit actually dropped into my spirit what that meant about the snow, because the snow happened on April the 5th. And so in April the 5th, and we're looking at what right now? Passover, April the 5th, okay? Now, I'm going to go into a lot more of this, but I want to tell you a few things uh, just that's just going to kind of go along with this. Um, so snow. What, and I was shown in a few messages previously, I was shown that we were going to be, or the bride was going to be gathered to him during the winter, right? And it was cold. And, and you know, so that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it's like, oh, amazing. And then, then I'm connected with this snow. And then I point out how Enoch in the book of uh, Jasher, He's raptured, and in that rapture, there's snow. And what's interesting about that, uh, I had another uh, brother in Christ that had sent me uh, some observations that he had said. He was talking about how I was discussing the stones of snow. If you want to uh, cover, I cover that in great detail in those uh, previous messages. So uh, please look at that. So I'm not going to go into it. However, the, the snow, I thought that was very interesting 
that when they find, when they go looking for Enoch and the men, that's very interesting also. There's a group of men that go with him, and it said it's 800,000 that actually are going with him. Uh, that's in the book of Jasher, chapter 3. If you haven't taken a look at it, uh, please go do it. I cover that in detail in the previous uh, messages. Uh, so, but it's very interesting that there is a horse that appears in the heaven, and it's just hovering there, a giant horse. And then that makes me think, wait a minute, a giant horse in the air, like Pegasus, like the four-star Pegasus constellation that where the star Algenib skirts along the horizon on March 16th, being the day of equal parts. And if you want to know more about that, then please go and see Brother Mike at Repo Man 64. If you haven't seen him, you really, really need to do that now. Uh, and uh, he is just amazing the way he's put timelines together. And I'm, I'm just, I, I love Brother Mike. You will too. And, uh, and I think that he's right on as far as the day of equal parts goes and uh, just way too much there to cover now. But it's interesting. So not only that, where else do we see a flying horse in the heavens? Wait, could that be at another rapture? Enoch, right? Uh and so we see that. That's interesting. And what just pops into my head, horses and chariots of fire, again with Enoch and Elisha. So or, or it's with Elisha where uh, he's uh, opening up the eyes of his servant and uh, Gehazi. And he's asking for Gehazi's eyes to be opened. And what does he see in the heavens? Horses and chariots of fire. I, it's amazing. So what do I say that this is looking at? It's looking at the heavens. It, all of this stuff happens in the heavens. And I'm thinking that the, the Pegasus constellation was what was being pointed at where you can look at there, okay? Uh, because it's indicating that's what you look at uh, Allah, Brother Mike, you look at the four star, that's a four star constellation, that is the Pegasus. And it is what is used to determine the day of equal parts or the very first day of the year. And it's the same every single year. It has been throughout all of creation and it will, as far as we know, through every part of the Millennial period, it's the same every single year without fail. It doesn't move. It doesn't change. It's not e e e e. none of that. It's the same every single year. And so the reason for that is so us regular folks like me and, and some other folks, you know, just regular, regular Joes and Janes, uh, you know, we how would we always keep the Sabbath because March 16th is the last Sabbath of the year, March 17th being the first day of the year. So you can always, counting from the day of equal parts, you can always get your Sabbaths in order. They'll never be out of order. They don't have to be taken like the Jews sometimes have done and try to make them align so that they fall on Saturday or Saturn's day, if you, if you want. No, it's, it's you, you want it, uh, the rest on the seventh day because that's what they use. They use numbers. So if it's the first day of the year and it's, uh, which happens on March 17th, you can lay out every Sabbath. You, you, you're not going to have to wonder, 
well, is this a Sabbath or not? Or should we do this? Or do we add in an extra month? Or do we divide this by two, multiply by four, use the square root? Of, you don't have to do any of that, you see. You just say, seventh days, okay. Next seven days, next seven days. Very simple, all right? All right, so anyway, sorry, I kind of got off on that snow. And I'm thinking that that's what all this is about. It was to kind of get me to understand that Enoch was under the snow. And what's very interesting also, as our brother in Christ had pointed out, stones of snow, which that to me sounds like hail or, you know, big stones of snow that were on top of the snow. And what do I get from that? That is like, so the snow, very white, pure blanket of snow. They look under the snow thinking that they are going to find Enoch or men under there, that they might have been killed uh, by the, the stones of snow or uh, under the falling snow. And of course, nobody's there. Now, I think this is very interesting. So what do the stones of snow, the stones would have had to have fallen after the snow. So for me, what that tends to indicate is that the stones of snow is judgment. Enoch was raptured in the winter time or this cold season, right? And then judgment fell. Now, what's interesting is we don't find any mention of Enoch there, but a strange way that they list this thing where they said, and they went to look for Enoch and the men that were with him, okay? So it says, that they looked under the snow, they dug in, they went again, and they did not find him. Now, I thought that was very, very interesting. It didn't say that they didn't find them, which I thought was a bit odd in the way that was stated, right? All right. However, what did I think about? It brought me back to Jesus when Jesus was resurrected. Then we know that many of the graves of the saints uh, arose after his resurrection. They came out and went into the holy city to be seen of many, right? So I'm wondering that that to me seems like a very similar connection. Why? Because 800,000 men start, but in several instances, and I want you to read it and check for yourself and find out just how many times he, Enoch, talks to the men and tells them to go back, right? They are left, and there are groups of men, but there's one group that will not turn away, and they go all the way with Enoch. And I am saying that the reason why it says that they looked under the snow and did not find him is because those other men were so closely aligned with Jesus, just like his bride, that they are going to be one, and they all went. So when Jesus calls us up, they are they were they went up with him at the same time. I think that that could very well be the case, because um, I, I find it very interesting that it doesn't say. And we looked under the snow. We found lots and lots of bodies of guys there, but we just couldn't find Enoch. No, it doesn't say that at all. So anyway. Um, I, I, I wanted to point that out. Pegasus, that's what we want to use the constellation to point to the beginning of the year. 
That's what Enoch is showing us. That is what Elijah is showing us. And they're all raptures. And I think that's what we're being shown now. That's what I was being shown about the snow, the same type of thing. That's what I was being shown when I was told that it would happen in the winter at the beginning of the year. And now we're looking at these other things. Now, let me quickly state about my wives, okay? Uh, now, I've been told that uh, there, are been, there have been a number of people, of course, that just uh, think that that's just really uh, weird or strange. I had one guy who was just it's saying, you are insane. Uh, well, if, if you say that I'm crazy in love with Jesus, I, I would agree with you there. Uh, and, ah, uh, yes, 458. Yes, Wendy. Okay, and we're going to talk about that some more here in a minute. My first wife, if you hadn't heard, I married her on February the 14th in winter, right? And uh, so that's very interesting. February 14th, I'm a romantic kind of guy, or like to at least think that I did. And so marrying her on the day of love made sense to me. And that it, it just worked out that that was the case. Interestingly, of course, now she passed away. She's with Jesus now. And, uh, and uh, it's going to be amazing to uh, see her again. What an amazing woman. Uh, and I was so blessed to have her and uh, so just so blessed. I have a new wife now and I married her a year ago. And this new wife, this was very interesting. She wanted to have two ceremonies. So we had a civil ceremony first because she wanted to honor Denise's legacy and we had a civil ceremony on February 14th, okay? Then we had a, another legal ceremony, and we had it on Resurrection Day. So now I, I want to caveat this because I want you to understand that. So I say that's Resurrection Day. I don't say that E word, okay? Uh, but uh, that's just the way I choose to do it. So we were married on Resurrection Day. Now, just so you know, Resurrection Day last year, or let me just say it first here, Resurrection Day this year is the ninth, right? Resurrection Day last year was April the 17th. Now I want you to highlight some things. February 14th, April 17th. Does that click something in you? Nissan, 14th. Nissan, 17th. Passover and resurrection. And I for all these years, I never equated them. That's what I was actually being shown. So I call, I say that I was uh, married to her, uh, you know, uh, on Resurrection Day, which I was, which I was. And so, uh, so that's, that's just amazing. And Resurrection Day this year is April the 9th, depending upon which calendar you want to look at, right? And so that's, that's what we're looking at there. I think just throughout my whole life, God has been, my Abba has been trying to show me when he was coming back, why he was coming back, who he was coming for. And, and I think a lot of us, I hope that you see that. It's, it's just, we, we have this saying how life imitate four, 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 I'm four. Oh my goodness. Thank you all. I, 
that just caught my eye. Four, four, four. Oh dear. Um, so what what I'm trying to say is that we have this saying about life imitating art. And I'm saying that sometimes our life imitates the word of God. In other words, that we are, what does it say? We are living stones, right? So I think that many times if we are more open to and being shown by Holy Spirit in our lives, we can see how it's actually our very lives point to Jesus. You know? Wow. 17 is the triangle number. 153. 153! Rapture fish! Oh my goodness. Thank you, Brother Well. Oh my goodness. That's even more. Okay. Oh. Oh my goodness! Uh, oh, let's get into more. I, y'all, keep going. There's so many uh, people that are making comments in relation to this, and so on and so on. Having covered this, I, I didn't believe this would be this long. Sorry, uh, but I'll go ahead and say this and 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 be done with it now. Sister Mary, I just absolutely love Sister Mary. Uh, she, she's such a dear sister. She, uh, I've talked about things that she has pointed out that she has pulled out from my God dreams and how they all lined up. Well, she's done it again. I, I, I'm just absolutely stunned. Now, having said that, this actually points to and is my point that I'm trying to make as it relates to others having another piece of the puzzle. So I'm giving, I, I'm given this God dream or this vision from God. And I can tell you what God is telling me about it and, and what I see about it. And then other brothers and sisters, it will have an impact on them too. And then they will be prompted and they'll send me this other stuff that comes in and it just really like, whew, wow, just blows me away, blows me away. Well, uh, our dear sister, Mary, she, she has done this on multiple occasions and she's done it again. And it's the reason why I was, uh, I'm online right now. So this is what she says. And, uh, and my goodness. I'm just going to read it and I'm going to give you some commentary uh, as I pointed out. She writes, hey, Brother Wayne, I got a strong prompting from the Holy Ghost earlier today to email you. But I second guessed the prompting. And right then I walked by my digital clock to see a big 458. All I could do was laugh just the confirmation I needed. I've been seeing 458 everywhere the last few months since you shared the on my way God dream. I'm sure, oh, Holy Spirit, I feel you so strongly. Thank you. I'm sure the primary meaning of I'm 458 in that God dream was Jesus confirming it was indeed him. God is king in Strong's. I kept seeing 458, and I prayed to know if there was additional meaning, and the Holy Spirit shocked me with these interesting God incidences about the number 458. Number one, 458 minutes. That's seven hours, 37 minutes, 737. Immediately made me think of the famous Boeing 737 and the rapture typology with airplanes. And I've done that a lot. Uh, you know, rapture flight 777 is about to take off. All right. I looked up Boeing 737 on Wikipedia. 
And the first thing I see is that the first flight of the 737 took place, brothers and sisters, hold on to your hats on this, on April the 9th. And 1967 was the year that Jerusalem was restored to the Jews after almost 2,000 years. And I'm going to show you because this is the clip that she had in there. So you can take a snapshot of that so you can see that. Okay. All right. So as you can see, it says the Boeing 737-200, the first mass-produced 737 model in operation with South African Airways in 2007. And its first flight, April the 9th, 1967, 55 years ago. And I would just like, April the 9th, April the 9th. Here we go again, 458, April the 5th, April the 9th. Anyway, so uh, that was amazing, but she continues. Number two, when you shared your second afterlife experience, I was so intrigued by your description of the angel carrying you 360 degrees around Jesus. The thought dropped into me to consider, I don't know, I mean, she, she amazes me, to consider 458 in degrees. Taking a full circle, 360 degrees off of 458 is 98 degrees. If we look at the 365 years, uh, 365 day year as a full circle, 98 degrees from the start of the year would be the 99th day, brothers and sisters, April the 9th. Okay, is this starting to really fill you with Holy Spirit excitement and joy as to what this I never would have thought, even as an engineer, which is what I was before I became a lawyer. The thought of doing that didn't occur to me, but it did to her because that was what Abba had for her piece of the puzzle to add to this, to really strengthen this. I'm just so amazed by it. So now we've got, here's two, April 9th, April 9th. What was the dream I said? The closing book in April the 9th. Okay, number three, the last little piece of inspiration that came to me on 458 was that it could also point to April 5 through 8, which is Nisan 14 through 17 on Israel's calendar, the two most important anniversaries of Jesus's life and the foundation of all believers in Jesus Christ that he died for our sins, amen, praise God, Nisan 14 and rose again on the third day, Nisan 17 opening book in, closing book in. This window, brothers and sisters, has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. February 14th, first marriage, Nissan 14, second closing book in marriage, April 17th, Nissan 17th, closing of the door. Okay, I, I think that that very well could be the case, okay? The, but she goes on. I, I was already sputtering to myself at that point. I'm all like, oh, oh, I've got to tell people about this. They've got to hear this because there is so much connecting this. There's so much convergence in this. It's just absolutely amazing. Ah, thank you, Abba. 
All right. She said, I loved your thoughts. I love the thoughts you shared in your last video about two moon rapture dreams, possibly representing the convergence of two calendars, like this month as both Nissan and Adar, the first month and the last month, perhaps symbolic of Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. She gives a question mark. It seems not coincidence that God designed the earth with axial precession. Okay, uh, if, if you, this precession, that's one of the things I, I think that's where we uh, get this. So if you don't understand what that is, when the, the earth kind of slowly, slowly, slowly moves, in relation to the constellations, okay? Now, when I'm talking about the constellations, I'm talking about the Maseroth, all right? Specifically, the biblical constellations. And, uh, and so that's what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're doing there. Well, uh, those biblical constellations where you have you know, Aries, the lamb, and, and so on and so forth, Pisces, uh, all of those, Libra, Scorpio, uh, everything. Those were actually the, that was the, uh, the story of Jesus in the stars, right? So you could look up and see that story every single day, and it was played out in the sky. Well, so, but based on precession, the sun will appear at it will appear to move at uh, just a tiny bit each year in relation to that same date the year previously. So in other words, if we have the sun that's in Aries uh, at the first, at the beginning of the year, it moves slowly and moves one complete constellation every about every 2000 years. So instead of the sun being in Aries at the beginning of the year, now it's actually in Pisces. And so I think that that's where it should be. So there are those like uh, brother Ricardo Garcia, I, I love you, brother, uh, and and I'm not saying I, I'm just saying you need to consider this uh, precession of the sun in in your calculations because that's where people not considering that will assume that there is that we're a month off or two months off because they're not considering that precession. Well. Was the sun in Aries when Jesus was here? Yes. And why would that be the case? Because Jesus was here. And that was the sign in the stars that our Messiah was here. Right? That's what that was. Now, what's interesting about this is that we're now in Pisces. So the sun is in Pisces. So what would that mean from the standpoint of the story? How about rapture fish, left behind fish? That's where we are now. Okay. And I will show you that in just a minute. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, so the actual precession that causes the equinox to shift at the rate of one Maseroth constellation every 2,000 years. That's what we were just talking about. So on Nisan 17, almost 2,000 years ago, the sun was in the constellation of the Lamb when Jesus, the Lamb of God, resurrected. Since then, the equinox has shifted such that the sun is now in the constellation of the Rapture fish, okay? On Resurrection Day, Nisan 17, perhaps pointing to the rapture, resurrection of the Bride of Christ, question mark. It's also interesting to me 
that Aries and Pisces are the only constellations that directly interact in the Maseroth as the lamb is reaching to loosen the bands on the fish and set it free. Beautiful imagery for this month's convergence of Nisan and Adar. Now, let me stop right there. And the, when you look at Stellarium, you're not going to see this, okay? But if you look at the old, the very old pictures of the constellations, the Maseroth pictures, I'm going to show you what this looks like here, all right? So she gives this thing. So I want you to take a little snapshot of that, okay? All right. So what this is, is this is the constellation, uh, obviously, Aries, that's the lamb, and it's right by the constellation of Pisces, the fish. Now, if you look at this, I want you to look at this. You've got the, this is very, I think, very interesting. If you will look at the lamb, you will see that the lamb has a paw and it is on the cable that's holding, that's on top of the band on left behind fish. Okay, and I'm just, I'm just wanting you to see that. You will notice that the other band and, and on rapture fish, the one that's uh, pointing up, you, if you were able to see the other, other bands, you could see this. Um, or I'm thinking, am I got this right? Maybe, it, it, anyway, the point is that the lamb is holding the bands or holding the fish back. Why? That's the restrainer, right? Holy Spirit is the restrainer. And then once the restrainer stops their restraining and releases the rapture fish, then the rapture fish leaves and the restraining influence is removed. You see? That's very interesting. But if you look on Stellarium, you won't see that that's what it is. The lamb has his hand uh, on the, the, the uh, bands on the fish. I think that that is a very, very interesting story. And when you see it, you're just like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Do you see that? Do you see that, brothers and sisters? Right. So... 2,000 years ago, we were in the Lamb, Aries. Why? Because Jesus was the Lamb, and that was his time. And on Nisan 17th, in the Lamb, he was resurrected. And 2,000 years later, we're now in Pisces. And on Nisan 17, could we be raptured or maybe passed over? You know, that's what we're trying to say. So she finishes out, I really feel so strongly, as we all do, I hope, that this is the time. I hope this email was coherent and not a complete mess sent from my phone, so not sure. Thank you so much for all you do, Brother Wayne. Your channel has blessed me immensely and made Jesus real to me. Oh. That so touches me, especially your accounts of both incredible afterlife experiences with Jesus. Thank you. God bless you, Mary. Sister, what amazing insight that you are giving into this as well. And look, when it comes down to it, it's, it's all the message of Jesus. It's all for Abba's glory. It's it's none of us, it's all of him, right? And, and so I'm just so blessed. When we are all obedient to Holy Spirit, so you remember she said she tried to second guess herself, but Holy Spirit it trumped her on that and she had to get that message out. And I'm so thankful that she did because I could share it with all of you brothers and sisters. 
Okay, I'm going to wrap this up for now. We have got just in the, it could be so very, very soon now. I'm just letting you know that, uh, that if you don't know Jesus, then you need to understand. If, if you haven't seen some of these, you don't know him, Jesus is God. And if anybody tells you otherwise, do not listen to that person. There's so much we could cover there. But Jesus, as God, he came in the flesh. He died. And for sins that you and I couldn't pay for or anybody else, only he could. And he did it to offer it as a free gift to you. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose from the grave three days later. And if you believe that, and I mean believe and trust in it completely, not just saying it sounds, yeah, it sounds reasonable. Yeah, no, no, you've got to trust in that. You've got, it's got to be how, you know, it's got to be such an assurance inside of you that you don't question it. You know that's the case. And if you say, I know, Jesus, that you did this for me, that, and I want you to come into my life, to be Lord and Savior of my life, to forgive me of my sin, to cleanse me and to make me clean, then I, oh my goodness, I just want to say thank you for doing that. I say amen to that. I encourage you to do so. If you haven't, don't wait. Don't second guess Holy Spirit, right? We don't want you to miss out because it's going to be so horrible for those that are left behind. There was the nice blanket of snow and then there were the stones of snow, right? So judgment is coming after we are, uh, after the bride is harvested, after the bride is called up. And, um, and it's going to be so very soon now. Brothers and sisters, I love you all. And I, I can't wait for, we'll have so much time together to be with our Jesus, to be with each other, to be filled with love and light for all eternity. I'm so looking forward to it. God bless you all. And I look forward, if, I, if we're not meeting in the clouds first, you're going to see me in the next couple of days. God bless you all and Maranatha. Bye-bye now.